Hey, Aiden, it's time to learn some chess. So, Aiden, did I ever tell you the story of how I won the senior championship? You mean the one that, you know, ended two days ago? <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> well, anyway, um, let me show you the uh, the concluding victory in, in, in that event, which was kind of cool. Um, okay. I, I went into the last round unexpectedly with a whole point lead. So if I just didn't lose, I would mathematically guarantee that I'd win. But, you know, I was playing the lowest rated player in the tournament and I felt like I had a good shot at a win if I if I needed it. So I was really feeling pretty relaxed. And uh, so then the the, uh, the game began. Shell begets, he was my opponent, and he played A3, right? What is that? What is that? Well, you know, it's a kind of move that people play when they say, well, I, I sort of want to play a black opening with an extra tempo, and that will kind of, you know, confuse everything. But he, he really likes this move. He played it in the, in the whole tournament. But the thing is that in this game, he played exactly the same way that he did against Novikov and at the beginning started. of the tournament. Well, the thing was, the thing was he lost that game, and I checked it all on the computer. I played C5 just like Novikov, and it checked out. There was no real opportunities for White. Yeah, but he said so anyway, he repeated it, but he played E3, so he played a different move this time. But now that the pawn is blocking the queen and the bishop, I don't have to worry about him taking the pawn in H6. So, you know, that was his big idea to do that, and then he doesn't have that. So I develop my pieces, see if he, if he takes his pawn, then I charge through, attack his bishop, and boom, I'm already, I'm all over him. I'm, my, maybe my knight's going to jump into e4. I'm just pushing him around. So not advisable. But in the meantime, what does he do? Plays f3, not really a very aggressive move, yeah? Not, not developing move. And then I found a good move, I went after his bishop. So if he takes my pawn now, I take the bishop. And I was planning to go here, and then had some ideas that maybe I'd play queen d5 and try to sneak my queen in, look for that idea later. Uh, but anyway, black has a good position. You know, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna, you know, grovel for a draw in this game. I wanted, if I was gonna take a draw, I'd be from position of strength. So anyway, he played bishop e5 almost immediately like it was all prepared. But then after I took this pawn, he started thinking a little bit. And and he actually, I think, should take it with the queen. But if he took with the queen, I was just going to take it. And then I was going to go e6. And that leads to this uh, end game where I'm much, I'm much better developed. I can't possibly lose this position. And I might might be able to win it. So I was very happy with that possibility. But after knight d5, it's a good position for black. Now, I thought about playing e6, and maybe e6 is the simplest thing to do, and knight's got to go back. But I was already thinking that I'm just going to knock him out with bishop e6. And then he played knight e2, and this was not a good move, because it blocks the bishop, and he doesn't really... See, if I gave him time to play the other this knight over to c3, he'd be okay. But I removed this knight, Much like Thanos, but yes. but uh, anyway. Wiped out half of his knights. Yes, but now I'm, I'm I'm getting a lot of good things going with the bishop, right? So he he attacks my bishop uh, with f4, and I I just played my bishop right back to g7. I was feeling I was actually feeling really good. It wasn't like uh, like nerves or anything. I was actually so relaxed that I was maybe not uh, totally on top of my game because I could have taken on, on B2. And That's when he, just game. well, because of this move, yeah? Yep. Yeah, the, if the queen goes away, then I take the rook or else he has to sacrifice his queen. And uh, of course, in the interview after the, uh, the last round, Maurice Ashley pointed this out. He's always got to be such a killjoy, right? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding uh, about uh, Maurice. That was fine. Uh, you know, I, I won the tournament. I didn't really care. Well, you know, see, if you had read this great book, Better, uh, Better Chess by Joel Benjamin, you wouldn't have made, you wouldn't have made that mistake. Here's a little bit of a close-up. Uh, yeah, 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 I guess. You know, sometimes I have to read my own books. You're, you're very right about that. Uh, but anyway, uh, after F4, I just moved the bishop back to G7 with all kinds of threats. He went knight G3. 
and then he he brought his queen over here because he wants to protect his queen side against my queen coming and here i this i had no idea i could have actually taken this pawn oh. this is kind of cool no come on it's not that simple because he can take but it's not like i didn't calculate it i just didn't i just didn't think of it and now queen comes in and it's it's not just this threat here but when the queen moves there's also this bishop lurking here queen check to a1 and then i get to take this pawn so basically it collapses pretty quickly for for white yeah. okay i could have calculated that but you know the thing is what i was really trying to do in this game was just make sure that i didn't take too much time that i didn't get into time pressure and get nervous about things so i was playing pretty quickly you know, at this point, I had about 10 minutes still on my clock. You really didn't need to be moving that fast. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Rook d6. So now I want to bring this rook over to b6. So he kind of has to play c3 to block me. And then I played queen c6. So after 20, tw after 21 moves, get this position. And on queen c6, I, I offered him a draw. Now, I didn't know what was going on in the other games. As it turned out... Nobody chasing me won their last game. So even if I lost this game, I still would have won the tournament. But I didn't know it. I couldn't watch the other games. So I thought, well, after queen c6, white should play bishop c4. And then I don't want to take the pawn, so I go e6. And then he goes rook d1. And I take. And took us. And then we get a position like this. Black's the pawn up. But it's not like an easy win or anything. Maybe it's, maybe it's going to be a draw anyway. You know, I... I wouldn't have really been that excited about playing this position out or, you know, when draw, you know, does the job for me. But after queen c6, he started thinking. And I'm just sitting there, you know, like, Except the draw, don't yeah, really, you know, it's a gift. It's a gift, my friend. But now he not, he not only did not take the draw, he played a, a not great move, queen c2. That's a not great move. I can, I can. You can tell? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I can so. So I crept in with queen d5. Now it turns out his best move is king b1 to prevent my queen coming in. And that's not so obvious because it lets my queen come into d1, which it turns out it doesn't really do that much. But again, it gives me a position I could not possibly lose because he's totally pinned up. You know, he really, you know, the best he could do is a bishop's opposite colors ending. So I might have done that. I also have the move rook e6, which is pretty strong because I'm just going to take this pawn for, well, basically nothing. But I, was, I, I didn't even see king b1 as a real possibility. I was pretty sure he was going to play e4, queen a2. But now I have a really nice threat. Like if he goes e5, I can go check. Boom. Yeah? yeah do you ever uh, read about that and how to beat your dad at chess? Well, you know, I don't think I ever fully finished that book because I didn't think it'd do me very good. Yeah, I don't know. It's a little, a little much to ask from you, but that's a nice tactic anyway. So, uh, so he, so he played, uh, so he played uh, bishop d3, and uh, so I played c4. As you do. As one does, and you know, already I could see the, I could see the end of the game brewing, right? Uh, like, let's say he plays bishop e2. Now, my first thought was, you know, when I was calculating this, you know, some moves ago, when like calculating. calculating, that's what we do in chess, you know, like, that's what I, this is a, this is like two chapters on it in this book, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyway, my, my first thought was I can always check, you know, I can always check and, and trade and, and let's say, you know, go B5, something like that. You know, it's a it's a pretty safe position. Um, or I could have also I could have also um, when he played Bishop D3, I could I could have done in this position. That's probably even better to do that way because then I take yes take with the bishop, and then I could maybe play C4 here, or or pos whoops, <laughs> or possibly um, you know possibly E5. I well, could play e5 here. In the moves and, forwards. <laughs> and then, you know, his bishop is kind of stuffed there. I know I had, anyway, basically I had, I had all of these, I had all of these possibilities where I could liquidate, not into a pawn ending yet, <laughs> but I could liquidate, uh, you know, into, into a drawish position. 
But you know, I and liquidation on the chessboard, that kind of liquidation. Liquidation on the chessboard. I, mean, I have that book here too. That's a good book too. Um, so then after Bishop E2, uh, you know, I, by this point I had realized that I would have this crushing move. Bishop takes pawn on C3. You saw it. I, I did see this one. It, 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 he didn't play Bishop E2, but I did see this. So if he takes with the queen, I give check. And now he can't, he can't block with the queen. So now I get to take the, the rook in the corner and I'm up the change, rook against bishop, and also going to take some more pawns and stuff. So, yeah, pretty easy win. The best thing in chess, taking pawns. Taking pawns. I like pawns. I like pawns too. <laughs> Isn't that so weird that we both like pawns? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so back to bishop c3. He could try taking with a pawn. Then I give a little Shrek. He has to come here, only move. He has to come. He has to come here, only move. And then, uh, you know, I hadn't exactly worked this out, but I could take this pawn. Um, yeah, and then King B1, Rook B6. So he has to go here, and then I give an, another Shrek. And then King B1. Yeah. So this one. Yeah, I think I'd actually had this one planned. Basically, just wins everything. Yeah. So. He plays after c4. He goes uh, queen, queen b1, and again I could trade, right? But but I saw that queen b3. I'm just mating him. Mating is better than winning an endgame. Bishop c2, queen b6, and I thought like, okay, what is he going to do about my queen's ready to come into e3, right? Well, he's a little bit slippery here. He makes room for his queen, so, sorry for his king with that queen move. But, uh, you know, now I saw, <laughs> now I saw the next move and I said, okay, I'm not going to make that stupid blunder like I did against Gurevich. Let me just, just chill out. I got plenty of time. Okay, relax. And then I, I said, boom, bishop takes c3. So if he takes it, again, this, this check, boom. it doesn't matter. He has to go to the b file. It doesn't matter which square. Rook check. He runs into the corner and then. Kablooey, right? Yeah, so he can't take the bishop. That's a non-starter, right? No, no. So uh, what else can he do? The best move is king b1, but then then uh, the finish that I like is uh, rook to d2. Now he's he's pretty much tied up. His his queen can't move without mate here. His bishop can't move. The only thing he can do really is rook d1, and then I like this. Takes, takes, queen d4. <laughs> And it's like a headed for a, a finish very similar to the game. Say bishop e2, queen d2, yeah. takes, and now this is cool move, queen e1, check. Cha -ching. And then I take the bishop, and then if I want, I can liquidate. Where is that? <laughs> Get that? It's, it's, uh, it's over here. This is actually the new and extended. New and extended. Game. I can liquid liquidation on the chessboard. I can liquidate into the pawn ending. Cool stuff, right? <laughs> Shameless plug. Okay, so he played rook d1, but you know now he's really getting really excited inside because I saw the finish. I check him. King b1. Toches, toches, checkers. And uh, now, now what? What, what would? Chess, not checkers. Not checkers. Okay. Oh All right, buddy. Let me let me give you a question here. This is a real rough one. What would you do if uh, if he plays king c1? Uh, bishop d2 checkmate. Yeah, okay, you're a sharp one. Yeah, you definitely should be four digits by now. <laughs> Maybe after the lockdown, you'll come out super strong. Stop plotting. Oh, stop plotting. Okay. All right. So queen d3. So he played bishop c2. Um, so anyway, he let me put the mate on the board, which I guess is uh, sporting enough. Bishop d1. Queen takes d1. Voila! That's all she wrote. And then after this, I... I uh, I actually, well, I mean, I knew that uh, obviously that had won me the tournament, but then when I, I went upstairs and I, I checked the results, I saw that, that nobody else had won, so I actually won the tournament by a point and a half, yeah. which was uh, <laughs> pretty amazing. I, I never dreamed that, uh, that you know, it would, uh, I, I'm going to say that it was would be that easy. It wasn't really that easy playing the games. They were really seesaw affairs, you know, maybe... Uh, Maybe after this, I'll show you one of the games. We, the, I think that you'll find it pretty cool. But anyway, that's that's how it ended. I won the uh, the senior championship, and um, you know, gonna be able to uh, 
to, to buy a lot of computer games with that money. Right? And and you became the first person to ever win the senior the U.S. Senior U.S. Open. U.S. Championship. And, US, I did win the U.S. US Open too. And <laughs> probably US that. Junior Championship. <laughs> and the U.S. Open. Was you, well. you mean the trifecta? Yes. Yeah. I have gotten the trifecta of U.S. Championships. It's pretty cool. All right. Until the next time. Yep. Yeah, that That's was it. fun.